Castle Demetresque, a place full of nothing but blood and death. This sentiment held by the village folk, who live in the area surrounding this old and foreboding structure, is every bit as drenched in truth as the castle's lower levels are in blood. Over the years, many villagers that have gone to the castle have gone missing, and have never been seen or heard from again. Perhaps the belief that they are simply deceased is a far better state of mind than coming to know the far more heinous truth of their fate. Their fate that remains hidden behind those stark, high stone walls. Today, we'll be opening the doors to Castle Dimitrescu, and more directly, taking a look at the castle's matriarch, Alcina Dimitrescu herself. Having flipped through the pages of the story of her adopted daughters, it is now time to take a look at the blood-soaked history of the mother and how she came to be, before her fateful encounter with Ethan Winters. So quite frankly, there isn't much anyone could have done to protect themselves against Ethan Destroy Everyone Winters. But while everyone else in the game wasn't safe, that doesn't mean you have to go unguarded yourself. And that's where Atlas VPN can help. Now you might not be wandering into an unknown foreign location yourself, but that doesn't mean you can't be virtually. You see, Atlas VPN is a nifty tool that encrypts your online data and makes it look like your connection is coming from elsewhere. Tired of seeing invasive advertisements that know your exact location? Atlas VPN can throw them off your tail by making them think you're somewhere else. Besides shielding your data from prying eyes, Atlas VPN also has a data breach monitor. They'll scan the internet to see if any of your personal details, emails, or passwords have been compromised by security breaches, giving you the heads up to change your password before someone does anything bad with it. You can use Atlas VPN on any device of your choice too. One of the neat things about swapping your location is that you can access region block content at services like Netflix, and you'll suddenly have access to tons of shows you didn't before. Currently, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount on the three-year deal for just $1.39 a month, and they even have a 30-day money-back guarantee. The deal won't last long, so if you want control over your data today, click my link in the description below to snag Atlas VPN for just $1.39 a month. And a huge thanks to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video and supporting our channel on YouTube. Alcina Demetresque is known as one of the so-called Four Lords of the Village who govern the settlement under the leadership of Mother Miranda. The Demetresque family can trace its lineage back to ancient times, to the Caesar family, one of the four original families who ruled the mountain's village in the past. Alcina herself did not call the village home originally, as she was born elsewhere in Europe sometime before the First World War. The people of Europe, and the world at large for that matter, had their work cut out for them recovering from the destruction of the conflict. Fate, of course, is nothing if not a glutton for punishment. And the war was followed not only by the plague of the Spanish flu, but years later, a sequel to the war to end all wars. Humanity just couldn't catch a break. Sometime after this horrific series of events, Alcina Dimitres decided to relocate to the Cesar family homeland in the mountains of Eastern Europe. Now, it is unknown if this was of her own choice, or if she was in fact lured to the village by Miranda, who had taken control of the settlement shortly after the Spanish flu pandemic had waned. Regardless of the trigger, Alcina took up residence in the castle on the southern portion of the village. Castle Demetresque, as it would turn out, is one of the newer additions to the countryside from a historical standpoint. Having been built in the 1500s, it is certainly the most, and I say this loosely, pleasant thing to look at amongst the scenery of fallen cottages. The dam and factory are both more recent, of course, but don't seem to be quite as well looked after in terms of their state of repair. At some point not long after her arrival to her new home, Alcina was lured to the caverns beneath the village and brought to to a crypt, or more importantly, Miranda's makeshift laboratory. Miranda proceeded to add Alcina Dimitrescu to a long series of experimentation with the mold organism she had discovered in those very same caverns, implanting her with an engineered parasite called a cadeau, or roughly translated as gift. As with the rest of her experiments, Miranda's goal was to attempt to find a suitable vessel to house her daughter's consciousness, which is another entire story itself. Upon being implanted with a parasite, Alcina's body underwent a series of mutations, including her gigantic nature, which was a side effect to robust regenerative powers, claws she could grow and retract on command, and the potential, as seen later, to undergo further transformation. Much to Miranda's regret, however, despite these impressive developments in addition to her halted aging process, Alcina's hereditary blood disorder was also magnified to the point of something akin to extreme porphyria setting in. Her desperate need for heme gave rise to her vampiric nature, which, though gruesome, was necessary for her survival. What's interesting is that Lady Dimitrescu's gigantic nature isn't the first time we've seen something like this. There's a few examples, but one directly related in my eyes would be El Gigante from Resident Evil 4. 
These creatures started off as normal humans, but due to the mutative abilities of Las Plagas, they grew to be over 20 feet tall. Other notable occurrences would be tyrants. But the thing about Alcina is she is more refined than any of these foes. She seemingly isn't phased by any bolts at all in the castle, and it isn't until she gets stabbed by the knife does she actually show signs of weakness. Other foes buckle under heavy fire, but Alcina couldn't care less. Her confidence as she walks towards you isn't a bluff. Her defensive abilities outclass almost all the bioweapons that came before her. But I digress. Sometime after her dramatic transformation and taking on her position as Lord of the Land, Dimitrescu, of course, through helping Miranda with her ongoing experiments, came into possession of three women, her daughters Bella, Daniela, and Cassandra. As we know, she took them in as adopted daughters, and lived with them as a family within the walls of Castle Dimitrescu. Outside of this mother-daughter relationship, her position and views with the rest of her family were strained to say the least. Dimitrescu believed herself to be the favorite, the most capable of Miranda's so-called children, and was overwhelmingly sickened by the idea that she had to consider the other three lords to be her siblings. She particularly had disdain for Heisenberg, perhaps because he was seemingly the newest member of the family, or potentially because he did not seem to develop any negative side effects from his cadeau. It very well could be jealousy of this perceived perfection against her own hindrances that especially agitates her. This, of course, all came to a head, once the gears of Mother Miranda's ultimate plan started to move. Once the cult leader got wind of the birth of Rose Winters, Dimitrescu's own wheel of fate began to turn. After Miranda had put her plan to acquire Rose Winters into motion, she had ordered the lords, Dimitrescu included, to kill the remaining villagers in order to feed the Megamycete, essentially a core to the mold in the caverns below. Now, initially upon her return, Miranda entrusted Alcina with watching over the infant. This, of course, is why Ethan finds a crib within her chambers at the castle. However, following this plan took a questionable turn narratively from the outside looking in. With Miranda crystallizing the infant and separating her into four distinct parts, and entrusting them all to her lords, Dimitrescu herself was entrusted with poor Rose's crystalline head. The plan here raises eyebrows, because all these parts would need to be brought back together again later that day for a ceremony. Now, at this point, both Miranda and the Lords were privy to the BSAA closing in on the town outskirts, and had also discovered Chris Redfield and his hound squad prowling the countryside. This could explain the idea of separating the puzzle pieces to keep them safe, but would it not have been equally or perhaps more secure to keep them all in the hidden crypts beneath the village? That question aside, it was here that Lady Dimitrescu retreated to the walls of her mighty castle to keep her piece of the force secure. Enter Ethan Winters, the distraught father and unaware and capable by a weapon in his own right. After being discovered in the village by Heisenberg, he's taken before Miranda and the other lords. Dimitrescu gets into a rather colorful spat with Heisenberg here over the fate of Mr. Winters, which ends with Miranda siding with Heisenberg, and Alcina likely storming back to her castle to pout. Now, unbeknownst to all this point, Miranda was aware of Ethan's presence and, to a degree, his nature. Although Heisenberg caught her motives involving Ethan later on, Dimitrescu was unaware and indeed was caught as such after Ethan escaped her brother's death traps and showed up inside her very home. Being the confident figure that she is, Alcina thought little of the man, and had her daughter string him up like a meal she was saving for later, while she went to discuss the matter of his arrival with Mother Miranda. Ethan of course escapes, and begins his march of death through Dimitrescu's home, and indeed her daughters as well. One by one he confronts her adopted family, and almost literally puts them on ice. Dimitrescu is beside herself with rage, which can be seen and heard by Ethan as he sneaks around the outside walls of her own chambers, eavesdropping on her phone call with Miranda. Despite her master's insistence of keeping Winters alive, for Alcina all bets are off, as she sets out to end him for not only killing her daughters, but for pillaging her home. I wonder if she knows that he's selling their frozen corpses to the Duke for profit. After finding Ethan trying to leave her chambers, Dimitrescu slams him against the floor until she forces him through, all the way to the lower levels of the castle. From there, the hunt is on, and her quest for vengeance is set. Unfortunately for Alcina, our favorite giant vampire mom is outmaneuvered by Ethan throughout the entirety of her home, until he finds a weapon that can actually lead to her harm, the Dagger of Death's Flowers. A dagger forged in medieval times, and laced with numerous natural poisons with the intent of killing demons and monsters. Upon finally cornering Ethan and running him through with her claws, he turns and thrusts a dagger into her abdomen, much to her surprise and probable fear. The first, and only other attempt on her life with this weapon, had ended in failure, and she had hidden it away with the hope to never see it again. Unfortunately for Dimitrescu, the weapon did at least, in part, live up to its purpose. With her body weakened from the numerous and widely sourced poisons, it began to mutate further uncontrollably, and resulted in her becoming some sort of writhing, draconic monster. Alcina's rage gave way to tunnel vision, as she ruthlessly pursued Ethan to end him. 
However, her size and Ethan's nimbleness ultimately seal the Lord's fate. In one last ditch effort, Dimitrescu attempted to bring Ethan down with her as she fell through the floors of her tower. Unfortunately for Alcina, Ethan survived the fall, and with a curse on her lips, she succumbed to her wounds and crystallized where she lay. From here, Ethan's story moved on and left Alcina's tale to end in the rubble of her home, just as we are going to leave things for now. Lady Dimitrescu, village lord and a most beloved giant vampire queen. What questions do you still have about this 9-foot powerhouse? Let me know in the comments below, and until my next video, cheers!